Our scripture lessons come from Psalm in the Gospel according to John today. First, Psalm 81, verse 16. I would feed you with the finest of wheat, and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. The Gospel according to John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. John 6, 1 through 15. Let us hear God's word to us. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. <clears throat> Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But where are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left, by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As a church, we are focusing on the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Our fruit of the Spirit for this month is generosity. And the theme for our series, as Pastor Steve reminded us, is how does your garden grow? And two Sundays ago, I must remind us that Pastor Lori started us with God the Tiller, and last Sunday, Pastor Steve continued us on the journey with good God the Planter. Today, we look at God the nourisher, and then we will look at God the pruner next week. As we do this, we think about how the garden in our own lives is growing. What fruits of the Spirit are we growing that can be for our own lives and that we can share with others? I just stole that from Pastor Steve. What fruits of the Spirit are we growing that can be for our own lives and that we can share with others? After his baptism, Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. We observe the Lenten season with the same number of days and nights. We began observing that last Wednesday evening with the Ash Wednesday service in the sanctuary right here. Today is the first Sunday in Lent, and we travel to Jesus' passion, crucifixion, and resurrection. I come from a long line of gardeners. 
My Aunt Luangi was and is one of them. I loved working with her in her garden way back in my college days. In the steep hillside of Mizoram State in India, her part of that world has very little flat land for growing gardens. Tuangi built a garden on her flat rooftop. She used boxed planters and grew an amazing variety and abundance of beautiful vegetables and flowers. Her friend who raised organic chickens on the other side of the hill generously offered my aunt as much chicken manure as she wanted to take. My aunt and I took a carrying sling. She carried the front end and I carried the back end. We went to her friend's house and shoveled the sling full of chicken manure. Then she and I carried it back around her house. We did this several times. It would have been a lot easier and faster except that we kept breaking out in the giggles along the way home. After all, she was the wife of a government minister and I was a theological student. And we were carrying and probably most likely wearing chicken manure through the streets in front of everyone. She and I then took the manure and spread it out in the garden with our bare hands, Mo giggles. It was so much fun. But the result of our hard work later were spectacular. When the vegetables were ripe, Tuangi gathered a pile of them in generous bundles of flowers, and we took them to the lady who had given us chicken manure. My aunt's friend who grew those organic chicken for fun was most grateful to my aunt as we were to her for her generous gift much earlier to us. My aunt Wangi, being who she was, also gave many neighbors and strangers her vegetables and flowers. You see, for my aunt, the fun was in the growing of the garden doing her part of planting, nurturing, trusting, and watching it grow. And then she got to give it all away. She found great joy in all of that, in giving her crops away. I did too. Trust in God was demonstrated by the generosity flourishing in the free flow of sharing God's caring gifts. People in many different cultures practice generosity in giving and receiving, and trust that what they give and take will make a difference. By the grace of God, this leads to miracles of life and growth and plentiful harvests of many different kinds. Food is one of those gifts, and food is a tool for nurture physically, socially, and spiritually. Now you know why I like to eat with other people. It nurtures me so in so many aspects of my life. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray to God, give us this day our daily bread. The Gospel according to John in chapter 6 is a story about Jesus feeding of 5,000 people up on the mountain. As readers of today, we know Jesus has gone up the mountain to escape the crowds, to be alone and perhaps to rest. Maybe he needed God to revive and strengthen him for the task ahead of him. Jesus did not go up to the mountain to be followed by thousands of people and to feed them up there. But the crowds needed him even more. They were persistent in following him. Gospel writer John told us that it was almost Passover festival, which has much focus on food. Imagine Jesus sitting up on the mountain and looking down the way he had come. He saw people beginning to come up the mountain towards him. 
They came and they came and they kept on coming until there were 5,000 of them or so. So much for solitude and quietness for Jesus. Jesus asked his disciple Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Philip was just like my husband, Will Brown, did not even answer Jesus' question. Instead, he answered the how much question, which was not asked to him. He said, six months wages will not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Andrew, another disciple, on the other hand, told Jesus that there was a boy who had five barley loaves and two fish. Of all the crowd, including the disciples, only a boy was smart enough to have brought some food along. And he trusted Jesus enough that he was willing to give up all that he brought with him to eat five barley loaves and two fish. I can imagine being that boy, watching Jesus thank God for his little lunch and watching it be multiplied to feed the crowd with 12 baskets full of leftovers. This reminds me of Psalm 81, verse 16. I would feed you with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. The generosity of that boy amazes me a child giving up what he brought for his own meal when a little boy trusted the power of Jesus and gave that gift of five barley loaves and two fish. 5,000 people got fed, and again, there was 12 basketful left over. The story of this boy shows us that no one is so small or too young to become a part of what God is doing to nurture this world and all of us in it. Remember a few years ago, a little girl of our very own named Kate, who brought her organic eggs to sell under this big old tree on Sunday mornings to help build our big, wonderful Palm Center over there. She inspired many people, including me. Little Kate was full of trust and generosity, giving her egg money to have the Palm Center built. Build it, we did. And the Palm Center is now serving and nurturing all kinds of God's people and children now. Similarly, we read in the Gospel according to Mark chapter 12 about the old widow who offered her last two coins in the offering books in the temple. She was neither too old nor too frail nor even too poor to be abundantly generous to give to God. No one is beneath contributing to God's nurturing purposes. The boy and the widow in the Bible and our very own little Kate showed trust and demonstrated the fruit of the spirit called generosity. Both the boy and the widow, through though unnamed, live on in the scriptures forever. They inspire us even now. Many of us will remember little Kate, although she's not so little anymore now, and her trust and generosity for a long time to come. All of us are loved and nurtured by God every day of our lives. We are richly blessed by God the nurturer in many ways. It is God that gives us our gifts of finances, time and talent, and even our very own lives. Our gratitude becomes our generosity. When we put our trust in God, we get to see and be a part of what God is doing in the world. Back to gardening. I still do some gardening now here in Sarasota. There is nothing more joyful to see than how my little garden grows by God's grace and blessing. I also do my part joyfully, watering, clearing, and pruning, 
but pruning is for next week, feeding fertilizer and even taking, talking to the plants and praying for them. If you look at the front cover of the bulletin, you would see that a very big bush of hibiscus blooming, it actually was declared dead and the gardener pulled it out for it to go out with the trash. I put it back in the ground and watered it, talked to it and prayed for it and look at it, it's flourishing. Likewise, in my other garden of the fruit of the spirit, I give my tithing correctly each year because I know that it belongs to God. I trust that God multiplies it many fold when I don't give my tithings correctly, I see that I come out short. How is your garden growing? We may not need to use chicken manure here today and now, but we use the best of what God gives us to help others grow in his love and grace. God's nurturing of us leads us to our joy in becoming nurturers. Thanks be to God.